All right, so we've got a few folks on the call, but let's give it another couple of minutes for more folks to join. If um, you can, you uh, add your attendance on the document that I share on the Slack. Uh, can can someone share the link to the agenda again? Because I, I don't see it in the Slack channel. Yeah, let me share it again. Uh, so, somehow, I think people who join after I share it, you, you can't see it. Oh, oh yeah, if it was on, on Zoom, then yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Hey, I think we can start with brief intros. Uh, myself, uh, I'm Ricardo. I'm one of the co-chairs for Tag Runtime, and I'm a regular, so I'm looking at uh, making making progress on the Cloud Native AI uh, white paper and also on the landscape. Uh, if you're a regular, you don't have to say a lot. Just um, just a brief intro uh, about yourself. Uh, so I'm going to go down the list. Uh, Juan Min. Hey, I'm Juan Min Chen. Uh, I'm kind of semi regular uh, if I'm not traveling. As I'm here to help the um, cloud native AI, especially from a sustainability perspective. Thank you. Awesome, thanks, uh, Victor. Maybe we lost them. Sorry, I think Cassandra. I think you have some audio issues. Yeah. Claudia? Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm a wannabe regular. I'm try, trying. Um, uh, I'm from, from IBM Research, Research, and I work on observability mainly for um, um, Kubernetes uh, OpenShift native uh, infrastructure uh, running AI training workloads. Awesome. Yeah, I saw some of the comments on the yeah. paper. We'll go over some of those. Mm -hmm. uh, Joel. Hi, Joel Roberts, uh, architect with Cisco. Uh, additionally, trying to be a regular. Um, uh, currently, have more of a focus on an SRE infrastructure um, and previous experience as a developer. Um, that's it. Awesome. Thanks for joining. 
Uh, Adele, you're regular. You want to say anything? Just saying uh, hi to everyone. Uh, I'm Ada Zaluk, uh, product manager with Red Hat. Um, happily trying to be a regular with this call. Uh, I'm looking forward to collaborating with you on the white paper. Awesome. And Kathy? Oh, hi, everyone. Yeah, this is Kathy Dom. Uh, I'm a, a, a senior principal engineer working on the cloud infrastructure at Intel. Um, I sit in the CNCF and technical oversight committee, and also is uh, you know uh, one of the work groups leads. Yeah, look forward to working with everyone, especially on the white paper. Yeah, we we're making a lot of progress. Uh, thank you, and Malini. Hi, sorry, everybody, me and my buttons. Uh, hi, I'm from Intel, and I'm a cloud architect, also senior principal engineer in the same team as Kathy. Um, and looking forward to working with everyone on this white paper. I'm super excited that we're producing it. And with that, a confession, I haven't done much this whole last week. Thank you. <laughs> no worries, no worries. Thanks for joining. Uh, Victor, sorry, step away. Uh, Victor, do independent thought it. Thanks, Victor. Anybody else on the call? Any interest? Anything you want to uh, mention that you want to talk about in, uh, in the meeting? All right. So with that, we can just get started and start going through the comments on the white paper. I think we made a lot of progress and we are aiming to hopefully done by next week. So uh, we can actually pass this to the KubeCon committee or the, the CNCF committee and they can review it and hopefully have it published before the conference. Any Anything anybody else wants to bring up before we start uh, jumping into the comments? Hi, I think I fixed my setup. Oh, okay, so yeah, sure. Uh, Want to go? Uh, wait, what am I going for? Uh, intro or anything you want to? Oh, yeah, I'm Cassandra Chin. I'm a student taking a computer science degree. And I'm here at Developer Weeks today. Great. All right. OK, so um, let's go over some of these comments. So uh, Ronald. I don't think he's on the call, but uh, I think he's been pretty busy with uh, preparing a talk. But so we have this uh, uh, intro here on the executive summary, and we have depending on your background and interest, we suggest a reading path. Exposure to cloud native technologies such as Kubernetes is assumed, and then so he's coming as add a copy or footnote to guide uh, cloud native newcomers. Uh, we already mentioned the CNCF definition, but I don't think that is enough to guide them uh, right out of the gate. So we we actually brought this up on the Slack, and we're trying to get maybe some videos, something that can help out uh, newcomers. Um, we might not be able to get it, but I don't know. Any, any thoughts from anybody on the call uh, of anything that might be helpful for beginners to point out here and, and, and guide them through like uh, uh, Kubernetes 101 or something? It, I I added the comment right below that. Um, I just rewrote this sentence as um, dated it as exposure to, uh, well, it's right there. I have to read it. Um, to me, my personal opinion or perspective, somebody says, hey, what is cloud native? I'll start with an application design of microservices. And then to me, cloud native, cloud native and enables that microservices architecture. That's just a starting point. So it seems if we reframe that sentence to uh, exposure to microservices or that type of design pattern and cloud native is assumed. And then just added some references I thought of on somebody to go look at. 
Hopefully that makes sense. Yeah, it does. Uh, any other comments? Uh, uh, Ron, do you have any? So like the the question is uh, how how deep do we want to go into introducing cloud native in this paper, uh, and whether we can use a very good reference. Um, so I think I think people can can suggest and curate references to actually you know go into the weeds with what is cloud native. We can just you know I'm thinking we can briefly describe what cloud native is. Um, and point folks to where they can get a lot of details to what cloud native is, and then uh, extract the parts that make sense for our paper to be uh, to make sense to people when they're reading it. Uh, so the part of, of cloud native that that we want to be focusing on, if that is you know Kubernetes, then we can point them to places where they can learn more, but extract away the parts that make sense to explain in a paper because if we don't want to prolong the paper. Um, and you know dilute the core content that we want to be mm -hmm. communicating and conveying. So does CNCF have like the you know set of references for cloud native? I mean, we should just point them to that then. Yeah, they have the definition. I think someone on Th the that definition, channel, uh... but like additional references. Yeah. Or like and a one on one. Yeah, this is, this yeah. is what uh, we commented on the. Slack mm -hmm. channel that uh, we were looking for some sort of intro or video, but it doesn't sound like they have mm -hmm. it. Uh, so I, I think some of some of these things we might have to leave leave it out and, and add it later. Uh, so Emily's mentioned here in the comment that she wants people to hold off on on the definition because they're they're be working on this. So I think we can reference the the GitHub repository. And that's the only thing that we can do right now until they actually rework And that's that. dynamic. That's a good idea. Yeah. So if yeah. it changes, it's fine. Yeah. Unless they change the actual file or the host, uh, the definition, uh, that would be <laughs> interesting. <laughs> Dangling point. Yeah. And we will have to correct that afterwards. But yeah, the point is not to dwell onto the cloud native definition, but uh, figure out and agree on what's the best paragraph to describe what cloud native is, and then uh, move on. Okay, so the, we, we agree that this is gonna be a reference. I think this sounds like yeah. uh, in the executive summary. So this is okay, so we can add that, uh, re these references. Uh, I, I will tag probably Joel to add these references. Is that something, do you wanna do that? Yep. Is that uh, just a footnote for the page, or do we want to have um, do we want to have an appendix with all the references? Does it get too busy at the bottom of the page if they stack up? Yeah, there's an appendix section, so we can have those. Oh, okay. Yeah. So do it. Okay. Um, so there's this comment. Uh, uh, about what is essential uh, of cloud uh, for a cloud native engineer uh, in terms of knowing AI. So, any suggestions of what what that means? What essential AI knowledge is for a cloud native engineer? Does that mean they know about Kubernetes? They they know about Kubeflow or some of these. Uh, AI um, type I, of projects. I think we can actually delete this sentence uh, if you like, because it's just a recommendation. You can fast speed to the challenges section without have to read in the what is cloud native, what is AI. So it's not necessarily required in this documentation. So I would rather just delete it. Okay. okay so do you want to take that on? I mean, yeah, sure. Thank you. Okay, sounds good. So, okay, so we have the intro here section. I think everybody agrees this, this looks good. Uh, and then Emily had that comment. Uh, anything you wanna add, uh, Joel, to this comment here? Can we call it done? 
No, it, it's done. Yeah. Right, uh, we good. already talked about the references. All right. Sounds good. So this section, I think a lot of folks have already read through it. And then if you have any other comments, you can also add it to the the, the paper. But again, we're aiming to to be done by next week. So hopefully not, not something substantial. So one comment maybe, Ricardo, I think, I think comments are fair if they contribute to making the sentences uh, flow uh, as you read them end to end. But uh, I think as you mentioned also on the Slack, and what we are trying to do is like, we, we don't want to introduce a lot of new content, um, but, but we want to make sure that the paper is readable uh, or very readable. Yep. Totally agree. Hey, just a just a quick question to that. What is our consensus uh, on any just edits for flow? Do we want to talk about that as a group or are individuals going in and changing, you know, like the word it to the actual noun? Do that make sense? Or are we gonna have one individual go through and do a final edit for readability? So we're read a bill. Uh, we're gonna pass this on to the CNCF for publishing, and then do a, they'll, okay. They'll do a, a I guess, an editing uh, mm -hmm. for style and English. Yeah, yeah, go through. So and we then... we don't we can okay. knock that off as our responsibility. It's not important for us. Yeah, they'll do it. But if you have any grammar stuff, you know, feel free to add them as suggestions. For example, Boris added quite a few of them, and I just uh, hit resolved. Uh, so they're not showing here right now because I, I resolved them. But okay, so just add that, but, the, but I think the consensus is, is is you can add these things and then we can just hit resolve and you know something like slightly off in terms of grammar and then and they're welcome. Yeah, but again, the the uh, I assume the CNCF staff will, will do some final read through before publishing. Okay, so I have a comment here from Ron. It says, uh, add very high level use cases here. Is, is this the case or still? Is it, uh, Ron, Ron, yeah, I think I think it's not inside the, the, the use case that we've discussed last time that we want to be uh, mentioning a couple of use cases. I, I didn't see them in paper when I read them or, or reviewed it last time. Uh, so I guess that that comment is still pending. Um, yeah. Adele, you wanna add something here or yeah, I mean you can you can add me. Yeah. I'll I'll go through it. Okay. Yeah. And just to comment on the on the figure, if you have edits or, or changes that you want to introduce, this this was like I would say this, I mean, this third iteration. Uh, I've introduced like a, a layer was the machine learning lifecycle through the graph, but this is basically the idea that I had. We can change it how it looks and whatnot. Uh, but I guess like if we get the layers and the components in there right, that would be uh, more important. Uh, we can work on the on the styling as well later. Any thoughts from anybody? Yeah, on this? yeah I think uh, the, I mean, first of all, I like the diagrams. It really paints a very nice um, architecture view of what is going on. Uh, just some of the technical, uh, you know, perfections. At the, workload, at the workload level, it uh, looks to me a lot of generative AI in the workloads, uh, which is, uh, not necessarily the case. We still have a lot of supervised learning models in the cloud, cloud native AI. So we can just add a supervised uh, learning mo workload in it and, uh, next to the rack. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. That will be more representative. Uh, the second one is that uh, when we are looking at the hardware infrastructures, especially in the hardware infrastructures, I guess uh, this will get a lot of attention because if you are just uh, um, emphasize one vendor over the other, 
that's where cut out cost a lot of uh, a bias um from our readers um, but uh, are... I would say there's at least Intel, NVIDIA, AMD, Google. Do you suggest adding a few more like Risk Five and ARM? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, that's yeah. that makes sense. Add ARM and some Risk Five. Right. Yeah, I'm, 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 so I added DOS here because I I am sure there will be others, and there's a lot of specialized infrastructure nowadays like uh like uh startups do in this space yeah run pod boss ai all of those folks who are focusing on running uh you know and making gpus more consumable from a cost and uh, uh and, and and uh speed perspective but yeah uh, feel free to suggest how to structure this um and other vendors or uh, I think to... he's suggesting put a few more icons for a few more vendors in that Intel, NVIDIA, AMD, Google, put a few yeah. more icons. And we're uh, close to approach... wrapping, so just, just do that and be done types. Okay. And and another approach I could I could also like uh as I was thinking through this, I I, I thought about the contention point that you mentioned. Um and we could refrain from putting logos, uh, okay. but then uh, we need a better way to represent infrastructure or talk about what infrastructure is. Uh, I guess everyone gets the reference of the big three or four clouds. And so, yeah. You know what? Put one little thing saying, what? this list is not exhaustive, so it shouldn't offend anybody. Mm -hmm. And We can put a footnote, footnote or something, right? And the yeah, yeah footnotes would be great. Yeah. Hey, I have a... Um, vision issue here can we make some of these fonts in that top venn diagram like picture a little larger and more contrast yeah. see the blue 100. and the white huh yeah 100 100 okay yeah. thank you um to your point about workloads um i think i was like the, the, the when i when i put rags and victor dbs and llms and yes genitives uh, but I was also trying to think of use cases. So for supervised uh, predictive ML, uh, what, can we think about like high level use cases or you know an application that people deploy that makes use of things uh, that that actually implies that we're using predictive ML or or non generative AI? I could think of you know predicting uh, stock. Whatever. Yeah. Say. Yeah. Maybe Gradient like a. Or, ob, yeah. Yeah. Maybe just like an object detection. Yeah. Object yeah. detection. That could be a very representative of a cloud native AI use case. Okay. Object detection. Yeah. I think that, that that is nice. Uh, um, and if you think, like, I, I'm looking for like use cases uh, that, but I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I just wanted to get across that I'm not putting like the technologies, I'm putting things that people use and then make them mm -hmm. like LLMs have neural networks. I'm not saying neural networks. I'm not saying, uh, yeah, the technologies or the, the frameworks. You know, something that's everywhere is clustering and it sits in vector databases like K nearest neighbors. What is it? It's about clustering mm -hmm. and finding set. Put classification, any, any, clustering. Yeah. Uh, so just say classification, things. object detection. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Good feedback. Thank you. I've been wondering, is this document targeted for developers or like anyone can just walk up and read it and understand it? It's, I think for, a, it. it's for just about anybody with different interests and different knowledge. So the executive summary is for some CEO types who says what's there and how and where can I run it? And that was what the point of having parts, reading parts was. And then we're assuming the AI people would like to learn about cloud native and the cloud native people would like to learn about AI and the developers or, or even companies where they should focus, like where the challenge is if they're starting a new company or startup or whatever. Because the acronyms RAGS Vector DB, it assumes you already are proficient in that stuff. Mm, that's a good one. Uh, Okay, yeah. here it mention? has to be small because it's a small space. But um, but I but think we, we have to make sure that we so, yeah. yeah we mention them somewhere in the paper. Like if it right. we have to say retrieval, retrieval augmented, yeah yeah. 
I think you can just put parentheses and small text under it. Oh, maybe even in the caption of the figure. Hey, hey remember we had appendix, we can have glossary also. Do you, you want to add another section glossary, but then we also, we keep, uh, like TPU, uh, yeah, tensor yeah. processing unit or rags yeah. retrieval augmented. And yeah, otherwise it, this figure, I don't think we should put anything more in it gets to. I don't easy. think readers would realistically jump back and forth between a glossary. It's just a lot when you want to skim it fast. Yeah. Ah, so let them just skim, and then if they're interested, they say, "What is this rag?" And then they can go look. Yeah. Do we have a reference to rag on the paper? I don't know if we do. Right? It's in the figure. Uh... I can put a good reference for for rag. Um, I think I have the twenty twenty one paper. Um, actually, where rag first. Okay. 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 okay, guys, do we want a glossary or not? I think it makes sense, uh, Malini, to have a glossary. Okay. Um, uh, yeah. Okay, so, so we it wanna, can be in the end. Oh. You want to add that in the appendix section then to yeah. one sub bullet called glossary or a separate section? Ref above references, maybe we can have, I mean, after references, we can have glossary and then comes appendix or. But also we have to think that we are, let's say, charting this new path. So there, there's no cloud native AI. This is defining it. And so probably it will be helpful in the future, not today, but to have a, a technical glossary of terms for cloud native AI. And that might be you know, a good hint on starting that, but it's not dedicated for it. Yeah, we could, we, and, that could be a different deliverable, right? Yeah, 100%. Okay. All right. So I think uh, we spent quite a bit of time on that. Uh, maybe we can talk about some of the other comments. Okay. Okay. So can we keep this? Okay. So there's a comment from Huamin um, to add a source file. I don't know where you actually uh, created this diagram, but it will, like, it's, it's Caledra or something. It would be good to have a source somewhere. I, I added the source. Um... So this one, I yeah, I added the source. Some it was was it removed? It should have been. So I added it in a comment. Someone probably resolved the comment and then also the source. But I can add the source for both figures. It's the same Excalibro sketch. Um, so I can add that. Sounds good, right? I can also add the like. I'm, I'm thinking to extract all of this into Excalibro format, uh, which is you know, XML and whatnot, and have that in a Git repo along with all the other sources that that might be the more long-term reference or the more sustainable reference for people. Okay, so there's a comment on this diagram to, from Juan Min that uh, we also need to have the other type of workloads, not generative AI, but maybe supervised oh. or just discriminative AI. I think... Oh, that's, I think that's why it's for the figure one. Uh, did I click the wrong place for comment? Yeah, that's just uh, the comment is for figure one. That's for the Okay, section. got it, got it. Okay, great. Sounds good. Okay, so let's, this one, there's a correction here. So just removing this one. Okay, so yeah, let's remove this one. So in, anybody against removing this or? Okay, I'm gonna tag you, Wamin, in this one. Okay. Me. Okay. Um, yeah, there's another suggestion on this challenges for cloud native artificial intelligence. Suggest a men mental exercise model. Uh, is getting overloaded in a oh, model is getting overloaded in the context. So we consider a couple of mental models, mental exercise. That sounds like a good suggestion to me. Anybody have, has any comments?
Okay. Uh, this uh, other comment from Boris, I'm not entirely sure what this sentence is trying to convey. In cloud, scaling, computing, linking, and storage are table stakes in, in both horizontal and vertical directions. In cloud native, managing these resources dynamically is an expected feature. Factors such as cost drive drive our decisions. Does anybody does this I, make it, sense? Yeah, it it makes sense from what we did. Like it, it, it I think Ron here is as, as part of the reflow is trying to explain what we've discussed last time, which is how can compute storage and uh networking or communication, as we have mentioned, tie back into this whole picture. And so maybe we can reword it or say it, but I think that's what it's trying to convey, like how the basics surface up into the context of cloud native and AI and so on. That, that's that's exactly uh, it. The CNAI, oh, that's okay. the, the C. Got it. Do you think you need to elaborate more on this or can you clarify? A little bit more for for Boris, or maybe you can work with him offline. And... Uh, yeah, I'll ping him and see see what's up. Okay. So Boris has a comment here that we're. I mean, he comes from the observability world, so he also has a comment here on. Oh, sorry, on security. Comes from more from Kiruna, which is like more security side. So, does anybody want to add some something related to security and governance here in in these pipelines? I don't. I think it's pretty early. I mean, it's it's not very well defined yet. But anybody has any opinions about this? One thing that might come out of all this is like a scorecard. There are efforts to build like I have used, you know, human genome data from across the globe, only brown people or white people or something. It's evolving, but um, maybe we can mention scorecards, but I also need a good reference for you for scorecards. I didn't quite find one. But is this is the so this comment is to to the to the five items here in data prep model training and so on? Is this it's scorecards that come generally with training that yes, I've used a diverse set of data or <laughs> I've sourced the data after agreeing to copyright licenses or whatever. Those are not yet there today, like the New York Times article that their content was plagiarized or something. Is that what yeah. you're getting at with the governance? I I was no, I was asking like because I, I think when we use this list, we used it like what's the de facto streamline standard MLOps pipeline? Uh, uh -huh. and, might not yet be there. So we can say and governance might be coming soon to a theater yeah. near you. Huh. Alina, you wanna add something here? Sure, okay. sure. Okay. I promise I will work on it today, tomorrow. Thank you. So we okay. don't miss our deadline. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think he might also be talking about Kiverno is a policy uh, def definition. Yeah, but I'm more for like admission when you have a workload or who can use it or if you have to mutate it or whatever. This exactly. is more for your AI pipeline, like yeah, AI yeah. hygiene, and that's a different ball. Game exactly, there. exactly. But I I tag Boris and to see if he wants to add a reference to what's intending to add. But huh. if not, then we can just leave it out. All right. So moving on to the next section, data prep. Uh, this is part of the challenges. Uh, so they all have a common. From you, it says data integration, where, where to store data, what happens when we have different data sources? Yeah, I mean, they. I don't know if we want to have the dedicated sections for them or just formulate them within the content, because I don't think it's covered by data governance, like uh, uh, data integration, uh, data prep, uh, overhead, 
uh, all of these things are are challenges when you're doing data preparation. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how we want to reflect that in the context. I don't want to be adding new content. Um, and I, I added that comment, uh, I think, three days ago. But I think uh, if, if we want to describe challenges related to cloud native for data prep, we might want to add a couple of additional challenges. Otherwise, it, it, the question is, is data governance and distributed computing the only and maybe distributed co co computing uh, abstractly covers it, but I see. Yeah, I, I agree. I think you know if we like we have challenges right in the data preparation stage, uh, we should add that. Um, is this in the challenging section? Yeah. 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 So there's. So the challenges is data prep. It, it, this is the first stage. And then within data prep, we have distributed computing and we also oh. have data governance, right? Does that mean we need, we want to add another, do you, Adele, you want to add another section or you don't want, or we can just leave it like, like it is. I could mold it. The question is, can I, I need to, to reread to see if I can mold it into distributed computing uh, as is, but like I can, I can, I can probably collect all of the other challenges into one section, and additional section, and describe that. If if that makes sense, so do it. Otherwise, we can just leave it as is. Sounds good to me. Yeah. Yeah, I, I can also add something here. I think for distributed computing, right, the communication cost, you know, across all the servers that will place that could impact the, you know, the, the performance of the AI workload. So we can add something. No, no, but here the focus is on data preparation, right? It's not oh, about... Preparation? Because here is yeah. the distributed computing, right? Yeah, so it's data prep, but within data prep, distributed computing, right? So I'm only... Yeah. yeah. I, think, I think I see your point, Kathy. Like for data prep, for example, the point that I was trying to get across is like the time it takes to ingest and clean and whatever, this is all network bandwidths and we're, we're getting into hardware for networking, SRI, UV, whatever, to make sure that, you know, the part where we train and the, the, the model is efficient enough to reduce the overhead during data yeah. prep, for example. So that kind, kind of can tie to distributed computing. Um, the, uh, yeah. Yeah, how about this? Yeah. Um, I do. Maybe you first you add it, and then I'll see. And then we can work together on this part. Okay. All right. Sounds okay. good. Sounds good. All right. So this is for that section. Uh, we have model training as the other challenge. And then within model training, we have accelerators. And so we have a comment here from, uh, from Ronald. Uh, Ron says, Super pod. I guess we remove super pod, right? So, and then we have also more follow ups with Huamin. So, can we consider this a result? Um, okay. Should we cover super pods? Even if, should we define and cover the. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> I, I know Ron removed it, but uh, Kathy, what do you think? Should we cover it? I mean, um, it's important enough for, because things don't fit in one. One of the problems with the old definition of pod was it was attached to a node. But if a workload does not fit on a node, we need a notion that crosses nodes. And that was where mm -hmm. super pod was coming. So I think it's good to put it in there because it's a, even if it's not fully there, not fully defined, like what is it and what's coming down the pike type of thing and what needs support. I, I think we can probably, I think we can describe this um, from constant perspective. Um, we can describe this. Um, let, let me see the comments. It, is there a reference to what a super pod is? Because I can't find it anywhere other than NVIDIA's hardware. No, yeah. So but if we cannot find it, we probably don't need to put it here. I, I feel that that super pod section has been con contentious 
since <laughs> the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, yeah, injected. There's a P2 version of the paper. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, I think the idea is like, like as as it's being described, right? Scheduling concerns over multiple nodes or even between pods, but <laughs> there there's nothing to refer to, right? So the, uh, I would just say keep it very generic, like so the you know we mentioned pod slice and super pod. I mean, those are made up terms at this point, right? So, but the concern is real, right? And there mm -hmm, will be mm -hmm. things to to deal with that. So. I think just, you know, maybe. I, I, I just don't want to mislead people. Is, this is coming down thing. the pike. Yeah. 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 I, because I, if you look, yeah. if you Google it, you come up to N NVIDIA. Oh, right? NVIDIA. Yeah. 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 Super pod is NVIDIA and uh, pod slice lands you on TPU stuff for Google. Right. So mm -hmm. it's going to be misleading to people. Yeah. I agree. Let, let's trim the weasel words and just keep it to. Uh, Keep it to the generic concepts. Yeah, I agree. We just keep it as generic or concept, you know, that level. Yeah. Sounds good. So consensus is to remove it for now, and we'll see what happens. Keep in the future a generic region. concept of multi-node, blah blah. Yeah. Or the need for it and the challenge that you know, just describing it abstractly. <laughs> so we'll hit resolve here. Okay, so cost efficiency is another challenge or, or subsection within model training uh, so i think uh, yeah you won't change so this I mean, everybody agree with this change mm -hmm. yes i agree i think we, we, we focus on cost efficiency because we have a separate section on sustainability right yeah all right perfect uh, so they need this okay we got a with the cost efficiency. We have a comment from Claudia. Oh uh, yeah, uh, I guess yeah that that's been addressed. Uh yeah, is this part is covered in the next se se section? Um, so yeah, just moving. Um, okay, perfect. Moving things there would make sense. Sounds good. Well, I mean, this is explained in the following section. Okay. You meant uh, yeah. sustainability? The sustainability sections uh, has the okay. content for both. Yeah, so if you can just focus on the uh, cost efficiency in the first section and then sustainability for second, that's where it makes its flows. So Claudia, you're looking for an example here on the Qflow trading operator? Yeah, I don't know what, what is a prior functionality to manage resources, like what what is doing. Um, I'm not sure. Um, I can figure what is this talking about. Anybody? Uh, like I, any... I, I've been using rest. I mean, not not the entire suite of what Kubeflow provides, but I've been using extensively idle jobs, and I've never seen anything to dynamically manage GPU resources. The training operator doesn't mm -hmm. manage resources. So she will remove this. Uh, so I don't know what. Yeah, if no one knows what that's talking about, it's way better to take that out of the way because it's not managing anything that I am aware of. But if anyone knows what this, she about, has a perfect then... point. This might come later down the pike, but it's not there today. Yeah, I think that's a very fair, uh, you know, point, uh, Claudia. Yeah, if you know, no. I don't know if you you are not you don't know if you don't think you know as far as you know it doesn't dynamically manage the resources. If anyone knows that, yeah, she who, who put that in? Um, maybe we can. Uh, Andre probably would know, but I don't know if he's oh, here. Okay, let's check with him. Uh, if he knows that, we can keep it there. If there is no, you know, such functionality, then we remove it. We can check with Andre. Okay, we we'll check with him. Okay. Anybody wants to check with him? Uh, Kathy, you uh, want to check with him? I could, yeah, I could check with him. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So most of the other stuff, could, um, this part looks okay. I think there's a big change from 
Boris that he suggested here. Replace uh, your cloud native environment like any other complex system requires operational governance to ensure sm smooth functionality. And what's the change? Your cloud native environment, like any other complex complex system, requires operational governance to ensure. I think that looks to me the same. But I'm trying to see what the change is here. Oh, okay. So I see he he, he deleted this paragraph and added this. I think this looks good to me. Does anybody have any comments? Yeah, his, uh, uh, yeah, he did like in that whole governance area, he kind of did a rewrite of the entire section by section. And I basically uh, just said yes when I did the reflow to those because mm -hmm. they look pretty good com compared to what Tom had originally uh, put in. Mm -hmm. Just because mainly because Tom's perspective is, uh, you know, I'm speaking for him, but, you know, more on the, the trust and safety side of the house versus any particular technology, right? And then uh, Boris came in and kind of made it more sing along with with the tech, I think. So that's why I accept. Okay, that makes sense to me. Uh, hey, can I? Can I? Yeah. So, uh, I just have a request. Is it possible for you to make the text larger? Because I don't know whether it's my screen problem. I have a hard reading. You know all these. Things. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Is this, is this good? Okay. Yeah. Uh, can, okay. can I uh, point out one thing um, about this this section here? Yeah. Um. So for the entire document, we ne never uh, directly talk to a person saying you should focus or your. I'm here. It's got the you in it. You're yeah. Right. Here I noticed in this <laughs> section. Yeah. It's. I mean, of course, it, it depends on the person who writes that. Everyone has a different style, but uh, this is the only section where you, when we have your you, uh, way of talking to the, the audience as a person. Yeah. Yeah. We say users or noticed that, but I felt unqualified as a grammar expert. <laughs> oh yeah, saying that that's why it was jarring for me. Yeah. <laughs> But I didn't put my finger on it. Yeah. So what is what would you recommend is uh, using the. something like I would say the, the C N A I environment is complex. It requires opera. That's all instead of your C N A I. Yeah, I uh, agree. Mm -hmm. Just the. Yeah. Very good. Good catch. <laughs> yeah. It's. So, anybody want to follow up with Boris regarding this? Or I mean, I want. Or is this a minor? Give it to me, and I'll do it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Forget Boris. Yeah. <laughs> this is minor. <laughs> we can handle using this. Okay. So I'm gonna tag you, and we'll I think do, you yeah. just go ahead and remove the edit. And edit your, work, the yeah. comment. You just yeah. edit basically directly. Sounds good. Okay. Thanks, Claudia. Uh, okay, so we have another on um, custom dependencies for this is uh, again uh, challenge. Sorry, this is continuous integration and delivery, and then within continu continuous integration in delivery, we have custom dependencies. Uh, so, Claudia, you have a yeah. Here, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not sure what. Um, uh, it seems very short as a paragraph, so I don't know if that's meant to be extended or, or not, but what the dependencies could be. Um, but since we're in that specific sentence, we're talking about GPU drivers, there is there's also other things like Nikol library for distributed uh, communication. That's still NVIDIA area or whatever. Um, so I don't know if that, if this is the place where this might be added as a reference or maybe not. Um, so it's just comment. Okay. Yeah, very general you wanna, comment. You wanna add something here? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's up, up to what, what everyone else is thinking about this section. So it's not, I don't think it's not, no one is gonna be, uh, there's no damage on in not mentioning 
nickel libraries or any other library. Uh, but if, because I, I don't know if then it's going to be like a forever long list of dependencies if we start listing. Everything. I think we can, uh, can we just mention an example of what are the, the components that are not readily available or compatible with standard container images? Uh, just, I think examples here would, would be enough to highlight the, the issue and the problem because that's part of the challenges. And yeah. Uh, make it more Broadly, clear. Yeah, uh, you're talking about there are you know different vendors have different libraries, so it's hard to and those library could evolve. Is is that what you mean? Uh, yeah. Also, that that's another way of seeing it. Okay. Yeah, I think a uh, problem. My my main uh problem is that I didn't really get what the custom dependencies section paragraph is because it's super short. So I'm not sure what, what we want to do with this. I, I think it doesn't hurt to add that if that's a, if you, that's a pinpoint. Um, yeah. Well, why don't you add it and then we can take a mm -hmm. look. Okay. okay. So I'll tag you Claudia if we want. Mm -hmm. If I mean, if for some reason you think it's not good, we can also there's a possibility we can remove it, right? So if by next week, right? So if you know, yeah. mm -hmm. we may not okay. actually have time to uh, some of these things, we can come back to them right later. So yeah. Okay, so uh, model service, uh, it's a serving is another challenge, and within here, um, microservice architecture is a subsection. And you have a comment here that says, I'm not getting. Yeah, part. like what is the comparison between the two? Um, so it says that so it goes from, we go from base batch, uh, this base batch processing to stream based processing. And then this evolution means that we're going from data processing to AI workloads. I'm not really getting what is. This is but how the things are connected, or why, like going. The so that batch processing, right? yeah, so that batch processing is gone and in favor of stream processing, and those two, it's not that they compare. I don't see any stream processing in AI, for instance. So yeah, I'm so, not, so I'm one not thing, really sure. Yeah, batch processing is not completely gone, right? So it's, I mean, batch right. processing is still is still being used heavily, right? And a lot of people are using stream processing too. So, so I I under, I agree with this. Uh, that yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, so maybe we should re we can remove some of this. And, mm. uh, Claudia, you want to take on? This? Yeah. Let Let me. Yeah. yeah. Rephrase. Uh, the analogy doesn't make analogy. Okay. Okay. So uh, we have another coming here. Yeah, let me read the document number five. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's saying each stage on top the uh, AI pipe pipeline may have different infrastructure structure requirement, for example, gang scheduling. Uh, that's software. So it's it's gangs is a scheduler also part of the infrastructure like hardware or it's I don't know what, what is the... scheduler is software. Yeah so but it's the, looking it, at what infrastructures available free blah 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 like that. <clears throat> Oh, in that sense. Hmm. Yeah, I think I think it's 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 I confusing mean, a little bit to me at least. You're you're gonna have the same platform. You're just gonna make sure that you have the right software or gates on top to make sure that when you run a job, it's only running when GPU is already across all nodes. That you know, so and, and things like queue and. Uh, and others try to make sure that this gate exists. Like you're not executing on a or reusing GPU resources unless you can actually finish the job. Uh, so 
there's mm -hmm. a software on top that runs on cube or uh mainly <laughs> i'm thinking cube because that's the main uh it's the main uh i can't can i don't remember i'm seeing implementations on things like Mesos or whatever but cube and it's it's a soft it's it's an op think of it as operated right an operator that ensures that whatever gets scheduled on top of your kubernetes cluster uh has enough it's resources really for gang scheduling it's an all or nothing type of scenario yeah yes yeah, okay. I, I think I can understand, you know, Claudia's wife, you know, she, she, she thinks, you know, she didn't get this. Uh, I think probably we need to expand a little bit on why, you know, gun scheduling, you know. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, have some. I, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I agree. This is, a, I think, one of, one of the topics that becomes, like, you know, in this paper, we have to, to, to focus on, on the problem, right, versus the, the thing that solves it. And gang scheduling is one of the, I'd say, one of the top five mm -hmm. concerns for running mm -hmm. AI workloads. Mm -hmm. Anybody wants to take this explanation? Um, you can also add me. Claudia? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Let's spell that name. And I like what Claudia did there. Yeah, I like it. But, uh, he I says, it. I want to know it and I'm going to investigate it. And I'll put in chat one link that I think might be good from Run AI. Claudia, take a look at mm -hmm. that if it mm -hmm. goes. Did it come? Uh, Run AI, you said? Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, hang on. I don't know what came from my <laughs> cut and paste. Ah, I did wrong. Sorry, I'll give you the whole. Oh, it's okay. okay. Ignore, ignore. Huh. Did you did you say I did wrong? I like half paste. Your, yeah, I like Claudia, Claudia's questions because other people could have the same question when they read, you know, this paper. So that's good. She pointed out all this, and we can, yeah, make it better. Awesome. Thank you for the feedback. So we have like uh, two minutes. Uh, I'm. Oh. Well, I mean, has a. Add a, a few comments. I, I just, I think they're all good. So it just looks like some, some edits. And we're gonna have to uh, probably keep working offline and maybe meet up, meet next week and make some progress on these things. Uh, um, one thing that I've seen people being confused about, I don't know if we should target it in this paper or not, but maybe we should mention it. So a lot of people are starting to use the term LLM ops, uh, right? Um, and so, it, which is, in my opinion, uh, a subclass MLOps, of right? ML ops, okay. <laughs> exactly, yeah, yeah. So, but, but people are starting to, you know, use the term crazily, I would say. Um, and so should we make a, it goes in glossary. It goes in glossary. Yeah, I think I think glossary is a is a good uh, place to 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 distinguish. And it's becoming like you know when we say search for something, we say Google it. It's like that, I guess. Here you go. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I have a question, Ricardo. For the landscape, I see that we have a section on that, right? The landscape with all the projects. Um. Mm -hmm. So. Are we going to talk with uh, Chris, uh, you know, to publish this? I mean, put into the CNCF landscape that diagram. Yeah, so Rob dropped off, but I, I'll follow up with him and, and see what the next step is here. I think the next step is to submit a PR, and I think mm -hmm. he hasn't done it yet. But I'll I'll check with them. And so okay. yeah, and then so he created the YAML metadata here. For the PR, and then essentially what we're going to do is just create a PR, uh, merge it, and after we merge it, any other changes, additions can be done uh, through a PR. So if there's a, a new I product... tried, uh, yeah, I tried running this YAML by the way uh, on a local cloud native landscape. I, I got empty results, so we might need to run it multiple times to make sure it works. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got to get the first time we got to get it so that it works. And after that, then we can make any subsequent changes and additions. Mm -hmm. Okay, sounds good.
All right, we're out of time. So I have a question. Do you want to meet sometime next week? Should we or? shoot for like a Monday wrap up? Like hopefully people work on Sunday or Tuesday. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, I think yeah so Monday or Tuesday works best for me. And now I'll be out the week after. So if we can just get this um, mostly yeah. done by next week, that'd be great. Yeah, does Tuesday at uh, 10 a.m. Pacific work? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. I'll I'll send out a uh, a poll uh, on the Slack okay. channel. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye, bye bye. Thanks. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye.